Hey everyone, welcome to Adam Shar Weekly. So in this video, we're going to discuss that at what point the Swift UI view actually re-renders, all right? So here's our very simple example. You can see that we have a VStack and inside the VStack, I have this print statement or print changes, which is going to tell us when the view is going to be re-evaluated. Not re-rendered, but re-evaluated. So we're gonna check what that actually means. We have a text field. We have a async image, which downloads an image, and a list which simply displays numbers from one to 20, all right? So if I run this application right now, and I can run it anywhere I want, I mean, I can run it on my iPad, but just go ahead and run it over here in the iPhone 14 Pro simulator, because that is where you can actually see what's going on. All right, so let's go ahead and run this. Let's see what's going on. There we go. Okay, so one thing that you will notice after it actually runs is this particular line, which is line number 17 gets fired because the body is getting evaluated, but also the everything is getting rendered because this is the first time that we are running our application, all right? So somewhere you might see this message, okay? Great, let me go ahead and clear this out. I don't know why it's printing all of that stuff. Now, what's gonna happen if I start typing in the text box? If I type A in the text box, you can definitely see it's saying content view and then it will tell you name is changed. So this particular state is getting changed. And if I say A again, so anytime I press anything in the text box, the text field, you can see that the content view is telling you that the name is getting changed. And all of this, what you see, where is this coming from, is this particular line, all right? So from the looks of it, we might say, well, every single time you type something in the text field, the view, content view, is getting re-rendered meaning the whole body is getting re-rendered. From the looks of it, it, it kind of feels that way, right? Because we are printing this part, so, well, I guess everything is getting re-rendered because it is going over here. But if you look carefully, then we will find out that not everything is getting re-rendered, but only the things that are changing are getting re-rendered. So what actually has changed in our code? We have three main controls, three main views over here. We have the text field, we have the async image, and the list. Only the text field is actually getting changed because the text field is changing the text and that is appearing inside the text field. So only that particular view is the one that's getting changed. So what's going on is that this part is not really indication of that the body is getting completely re-rendered, but this particular line is basically saying that the body is being evaluated, all right, evaluated, which means that the Swift UI is gonna check that what different views I need to render or not. Because think about it, if you're doing something in the text field which has nothing to do with the async image, or in nothing to do with the list, it would be really bad practice or a bad you know, uh, calculation or algorithm from the Swift UI part if Swift UI will say, well, you got the, you, you changed the name, so I'm just gonna render every single thing in the body. And right now our view is quite simple. So, you know, even if you, I guess, re-render, it may not, you may not see much going on. Uh, actually, you might see flicker because we are performing a very heavy request on line number 23, where async image, but this whole thing is not getting re-rendered. Only the thing that are getting changed is getting re-rendered, all right? So from my understanding, what actually happens is, let's take a look at this view in terms of how this is getting uh, built. So we have the body, and in the body we have a text field, I mean, we have the VStack, but forget about the VStack for a minute. We have the image, which is an async image. 
and we have another one which will be the list. So these are the things that we have. All right, so now when you change something, let's say you type in the text box, it fires line number 18, which means it's evaluating the, the whole view. It's checking what things have actually changed. And by evaluating the view, it means that it's going to diff the view, meaning find the difference. And in the difference, it's going to, well, first of all, I guess it's gonna copy the old view, meaning kind of like this, with the text field, with the image, and the list. And then it will find out that, oh, only text field has changed. So let's destroy the text field and recreate it again. All right, so in that case, only the text field view of the control will get re-rendered and it will use the old copy of the image as well as the list. So whenever you do evaluation or uh, the view is being or the body is being evaluated, that is not really a very heavy operation, meaning it can be done very, very quickly. So that's not really a big deal if your view is getting evaluated multiple times. But uh, make sure you understand that when the view is getting evaluated, which you can see right there, it does not mean that everything inside the body will be re-rendered. It will only re-rendered if SIFUI thinks that those views needs to be re-rendered because something has changed, which correspond to that view, all right? So let's go ahead and take a look at this example a little bit more closely, we have this name, okay, that's fine. And we are performing this async request, all right? This async image is not really going to cache the image. We already know that we have worked with async image and at this particular moment, the async image does not cache the image, which means that if it was fetching the image again, because the name is changing, then we should be able to see this request again. Right? So let's go ahead and see if we do that or not. For that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run this on my iPad and we're gonna look at it in instruments to see that the network request is going on or not. So let's go ahead and see. This is my actual iPad on the left and this is the instruments on the right. So let me go ahead and run this. Okay, so since I just ran the instruments, you can definitely see that uh, we don't really have that particular request, the initial request, okay? So let me go ahead and this is the actual device. So I have to actually go to the actual device. I'm gonna click over here, enter name, and I'm just gonna go ahead and type something. It doesn't really matter what I'm typing. I'm just typing some uh, random numbers or random letters, just A, 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 all right? And what I'm thinking is at this point, if everything inside the view was being re-rendered again, then I should have seen a very big spike right there for downloading the images, but I really don't see anything going on, right? Let's go ahead and stop this for a moment. Let's go back and try to manually create that spike. So what I'm gonna do is I will create a button over here. I will just say toggle, and toggle is going to simply toggle a state, private var is true or is download, whatever, is open, whatever, it doesn't really matter what we call it over here. Okay, and is open dot toggle. So whenever you click this button, which is the toggle button, it's going to set this property, the state is open, uh, true to false, false to true. And on basis of that, we can actually change that URL. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and enter something over here. It doesn't really matter what I enter. I'm just gonna say sort equals to, and is open, then I'm just gonna return true as a string, else I'm just gonna return false, all right? So now this particular async image, the URL is actually dependent on the value of is open state variable. If is open is true, then true is gonna return as a string. If is open is not true, meaning false, is a false is gonna get returned, which means that the URL will actually change, all right? And that will cause it to re-render. So let me go ahead and run this again. And we're gonna see over here, 
let's go ahead and start recording also. There we go. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and press the toggle button. Okay, so I pressed it one time and there we go. You see that right here, there is the HTTP request. You can even click on this HTTP request portion. There we go. And we should be able to see if we drill down into it, we should be able to see what kind of request was it. And you can see right there, it is sort equals to true. Okay, so that looks like it's working fine. If I click toggle again, it's going to turn it to false. And we should see an HTTP request again somewhere. There we go. And if we look at that request uh, closely, we should see false. All right. So this means that HTTP request is going on, which also kind of means that your async image is getting re-rendered again because now it's a different image. So every time I toggle, you can definitely see the image is also changing, right? Now, if I go back over here to my actual text field, so let me click on that, and I start typing some letters, you will see that there is no HTTP request going on, which comes to conclusion that the async image is not getting re-rendered just like it is getting re-rendered when you toggle because toggle changes is open and that actually changes the URL. And when you, the diff algorithm in Swift UI then tells it that, hey, uh, I think that has changed now. So I think we, we should go ahead and re-render the Swift UI view. All right, so that is what's going on. But by simply typing something in our text box, the content view is getting re-evaluated because you can definitely see re-evaluation going on. But after the re-evaluation and after change or after diffing with the two different trees, so if you I find out that, well, it doesn't really look like that you change async image and the list, so I'm just not gonna re-render it again. It's fine, all right? Now, let's see what happens when I change this a little bit more. So instead of putting sort equals to true and all that, what if, I'm just gonna copy this and comment out this one. What if we change this part to something else? So if I say name equals to, and then inject the value of name, all right? So now you can definitely see that the async image is dependent on the name state property, which means any single time, every single time you are going to change the name, it is going to uh, change that particular property. Let me go ahead and see what's going on. There we go. Uh, okay, let me fix that. Okay, so after fixing this, the async image string is dependent on the name property and name property is something that is being changed whenever we type something in the text field. So let's go ahead and run it again. And uh, okay, there we go. All right. So now if I go to my name property and I type something, every single time I'm going to type something, it's going to make that request. See that? See the HTTP traffic is going absolutely crazy over here. See that? That is pretty bad. Your, app, your application will be super slow because every single time I'm typing something, that thing is being injected into the URL and now the URL, meaning the async image, is performing those requests on every single typing that I'm doing, every single character, and the async image is getting re-rendered again along with the text field. And you can definitely see a lot of stuff going on, all right? So basically after doing this, we kind of learned that just because your body is getting evaluated or re-evaluated, that does not necessarily means that all the different views inside your body will be re-rendered. Because if they are getting re-rendered, then obviously it's gonna be a very big problem uh, because we are re-rendering things that don't need to be re-rendered, right? Like this list over here doesn't really need to be re-rendered whenever I type something in the name text field because it has nothing to do with the name text field. So it's just a old, whatever 20 items were listed, it's basically the same thing. 
So there is a big difference between evaluating a body and re-rendering of a view. Evaluation is normally very fast because it's just diffing, it's just finding out that one view hierarchy is now different from the other view hierarchy that it has created. The rendering is the complicated or the more uh, expensive part depending on the view that you have. So let me know what you think about this little experiment. Uh, if you have thoughts, go ahead and share it in the comments. Uh, thank you for watching. If you like this video and want to support my channel, then check out my courses on Udemy. I just published my brand new course, which is MV Design Pattern in iOS, builds of UI applications like the Apple's way. So this is a great course if you want to learn about different ways of building SIF UI applications in much easier way so that you don't really fight the SIF UI framework, you use it to build applications. So definitely check out that. The link will be right there in the description. Thank you so much. Hope you enjoyed it.